In this video, we're going to look at how easy it is to train models in the Edge Impulse, MLOps, and AutoML frameworks, and then deploy these models to the Axis Network cameras using the FixedIt Edge Impulse application runner. First off, we're going to find the camera we're going to deploy our model to, and I will do this using the Axis IP utility software. Here we can see that we have an M4308 camera connected to our network, so I'm going to open the web page of this camera. Next, I'm going to go to the Applications page, and here I'm going to install our application. So you can see here that I have previously downloaded the EIP file, the installable packet for the Edge Impulse runner application. So I'm going to install this in my camera. And now we can see that the application is installed. So if we now start the application, the application will have a pre-installed model which detects red, green, and blue uh, stickers. So I'm going to start by testing, testing the function of that application. And this application creates access events in the camera's event system. One way to show them is using the access metadata monitor. And in this window, I will now be able to see all the events produced by the camera. So I'm going to put this on the right side, and I'm going to take the camera's live view on the left side. We can now see the live view from the camera, and we can see the event on the right side. I have enabled auto scroll, so it will automatically scroll down as we get new events. We can see the events on the right side. Unfortunately, it is lagging behind a little bit due to my computer being quite weighed down now by recording this video. But we can see the event stream coming with the label green, and we can see the width, height, confidence, and uh, also the um, coordinates for the objects. And if I now do this with a red sticker instead, we will see that we get new events with the label uh, red instead. So this is how we can use the access event metadata, um, the access metadata monitor to uh, watch the events from our application. And we now know that the included model works. So the next step is that we want to have our own uh, model instead of the pre-installed model. And we will train our model in Edge Impulse Studio. I have a project here, um, which is for detecting faces. And in this project, I have already uploaded a few um, sample of images. I have 258 images in total, so it's a very small data set. Uh, but normally, uh, Edge Impulse is very good at creating um, decent models of extremely small data sets. And a lot of this data is um, generated synthetic data. So we see that it's not very um, realistic at all, but it's still good enough to find faces. But to make this a little bit better for our fisheye camera that we're going to use, uh, I want to collect some uh, data that we can retrain this model on. So that is the next step we will do with our camera. And we're doing that by going to the camera and starting a video stream. Um, we can see that I still have some overlays on the screen here, so we're going to remove those before I start the recording to not have them included in our training data. Next, I'm going to start the recording. And I'm going to take the camera and record my face. and then I'm stopping the recording. So by doing like this, we will get uh, data to fine tune on from the specific situation that we will use the model, both with the correct camera and also the correct background. So that will make the model uh, a lot better at this particular uh, scene. 
The next thing we want to do is that we want to use the video we have just recorded and split it up into frames that we can upload into Edge Impulse to fine tune our model. To do that, we're first going to go to the recordings tab where we can see all the recordings we have done with our camera. And here we can see the latest recording we did. So I'm going to download this recording and we can see that it starts the downloading process. So in the meantime, we can start the recording and verify that it's actually the one that we uh, just recorded. And we can see that we recognize this recording with my face. So the download is now uh, completed. So I'm going to open the um, file explorer and we can see that we have the downloaded file here. Um, next, I'm going to start VLC um, because we're going to use VLC to split the video into different frames. This is a functionality that seems to be a little bit buggy in VLC. There are a lot of other tools to do this. Personally, I prefer to use FFmpeg for the command line, but uh, this is an um, easy way to do it with standard tools that almost everyone has installed. So we're going to go to the Tools and Preferences page and then click the Show Settings All. And down here, we will find the Video tab and we will find Filters. And here we will enable Scene Video Filter. And we will then expand this and again find a Scene Video Filter here to configure it. And here we can select output format. I'm going to use PNG. We can select the width and the height of the images. And negative one means that we keep the original um, resolution. Um, file and prefix, I'm not going to specify anything uh, there. Um, and I'm also going to create a new um, folder where we will have our um, training images. And then I will copy the path to this folder and specify in the directory path fix. And on recording rate, right here we can specify um, the ratio of images from the video that we should save. I'm going to leave that at one. And um, now comes the bug in this filter that it seems like we need to close down VLC and then again open uh, VLC to make the filter um, actually work. And after doing this, we just need to start the video and play it. And hopefully as we do that, we should see that we get image files created here in our training images folder. So we see as the video plays through the, um, or VLC plays through the video, the images are created. It's a bit slow since it both saves all the images, but also because I'm doing a screen recording right now on my laptop, which um, isn't really optimized for this. But we see that the images are created um, and soon we are done with this video. And then we can move on to the next step of uploading and annotating these images. So after you are done with VLC, don't forget to uh, turn off the filter again. Otherwise, it will continue to save frames the next time you open a new uh, video. So I'm turning off the filter, closing the VLC, and we are heading over to Edge Impulse uh, Studio again. And now I'm going to Dashboard. I'm going to add existing data. And I'm going to select upload data. I'm going to select a folder of data. I'm going to put everything in the training data as I'm not going to do any testing right now. Um, first, of course, we need to select the file and I'm going to select the training images uh, folder which contains all the images that we have just um, generated. So now when I click upload data, it's first going to start up a um, virtual machine in the background, which the data is uploaded to. So this will take a few seconds um, and then we will see it starting to upload the frames. I'm going to close this. And if we go to our labeling queue, we can see that here we have our new images that we have just uploaded. So in this um, image, we can kind of see my face, but I think I decide not to annotate that since it's not a face from the front, which is what I have trained my model on. And it's the same with this image. And here we have a perfect face. Annotate this. Here we have another face and we can see here that we have track objects between frames enabled, so we don't need to do uh, much annotation actually when the frames are this similar. Here it did fail a little bit, so I'm going to move the box.
and now we have annotated our images. So next we're going to go to the object detection model and start a new training of this model. So this will take a little while. So we can now see that the model has been uh, trained and we can look here at the validation accuracy and see that we have a precision of 100% but only a recall of 85%. So we're not detecting all the faces. Um, but with a total um, F1 score of 92%, I'm pretty happy for this uh, very small data set that we have collected. So the next step would normally be to, um, to evaluate the model with uh, model testing, and then we would save a model with versioning. Uh, I'm not going to do that right now, so instead we're just going to deployment, and we're going to select um, the unoptimized float for the two model, which I think is the fastest one on the camera I'm currently using. Uh, but this is something you can test uh, between the quantized and the um, floating point models. Um, you can also enable the uh, EM compiler if you want to. Uh, it will reduce the size of the model, but um, shouldn't affect the runtime of it. So I'm going to leave that as uh, disabled. We can now see that the C++ library has been uh, built and is um, automatically downloading. So this shouldn't be too big, it should be done quite soon. So now we can see that we have the model downloaded called Faces Data Gen V12. And we can also see that I have our fixed it um, PDF file here with a manual um, for the Edge Impulse uh, runner application. So we're going to use this now for the second step of deploying the model to the camera. And if we look in the content here, we have first how to install the application. We already did, the, did that in the beginning of the video. And then we have to set up an overlay um, to show on the video feed when detections are detected. Uh, we're not going to do that in this video since we're instead using the Axis metadata monitor to watch the events. So we're going down to page 10 where we have setting up the uh, or converting the model and deploying it to the camera. Um, so here we can see the step of downloading the model from Edge Impulse. Then we have an instruction for how to deploy it using Linux. And right now we're on Windows, so I'm jumping down um, to this step instead. And this is something that we are currently working on making easier. This will instead be a web-based uh, service for converting the model, where you either graphically can just open your browser, upload the model, and download the converter model, uh, and then uh, upload in the um, user interface in the camera. Um, or you could call it up with an API. Currently, it is a little bit more complicated since uh, it's that depending on Docker on your computer. So you need to install Docker. Uh, it is outlined in these uh, instructions here how to do it. It's relatively simple. Um, the only thing you need to remember is that you might want to update uh, VSL uh, to VSL2 if that is needed, but that's also um, instructed here in this link. So next I'm going to op open a PowerShell. And in this PowerShell, I'm going to start by testing that Docker works as expected. And we can see that I get exactly the output that I expect from this command. So next I'm going to set up some configuration for the um, model compilation that we need. Um, you also need to have the keys to our um, Docker repository, and you will get them when you sign up for using our Edge Impulse application. I will just replace um, these placeholders with my unique keys. Then we will log into the Docker repository using this command. It seems like the issue was that we, uh, when we copy pasted, we got a few line breaks that we shouldn't have. So just removing all these and keeping it on a single line fixed that issue. And now we see a login succeeded, which is what we want to see. So the next step is that we're going to compile the model. Um, to do this, we need to be standing in the directory where we actually have the model. So I'm going to go to the um, downloads folder. And here we can see that I have my faces data again, V12. So I'm going to copy, um, before that, I'm actually going to copy this command instead that we're going to run. And here I need to replace the name of my model. 
So like this. Now the model will be compiled for this camera we are using. So this step will take a few minutes. The model compilation is now done, so the only step left is to copy the model to the camera. To do this, we're first going to make sure that the application is stopped in the camera. We can see that the application has been stopped. So now we're going to copy this command and we're going to check the IP address of our camera and replace this here. This is another of the steps that we are working on uh, making easier so that you instead can upload the new model from the user interface. Um, but for now, this is how you need to do it. And it is now done, so we can again start the application. And let's again start the Axis Metadata Monitor. See all the events here from the camera. And let's go to the live view in the camera and see if we can get it to detect my face. As we can see, the model isn't particularly impressive in this example, but remember that I have just collected 265 images in total, out of which most is uh, synthetic data, uh, and we only annotated nine images in this particular video using this particular camera. Um, so by collecting a little bit more of images, um, and annotate the more images and training your model a bit more, you will be able to get something relatively um, good that is absolutely, absolutely usable in industrial use cases. Um, and also remember that this model is running totally in the camera, so it, isn't need, it, it doesn't need any internet connectivity. Even if the in internet connectivity or the network connectivity would fail, the model will still continue to run in the camera without any extra um, hardware or uh, computers around. Um, so it's a really powerful uh, method to be able to train these models. And when it comes to how many images you need to collect, uh, how many images you need to annotate, it can be hard to answer it because it depends a lot on how your situation looks like. If you just have one camera, then you don't need as much. But if you have a lot of different cameras with different lenses and uh, so forth, then you need a lot more data. And the same when it comes to the environment. If you're only going to collect images from or use your model in one type of environment, then you don't need as much as if you want a model that is generalizable across different environments. Um, but I can recommend um, looking at the Edge Impulse um, YouTube channel, for example, and uh, they have a lot of documentation also. Um, they have a lot of documentation available about how you train models, how you optimize models, and so forth. And all that is applicable to, um, to the use case when you're going to run the models in the Axis cameras. Um, so with that said, if you're interested in using these applications, you can go to the fixedit.ai website, uh, and you will find the um, applications page where we have our Edge Impulse runner application. And here you can find an early adopter form. Um, the application is currently in beta release. So if you want to um, try this out early, if you have a use case where you think uh, are good suited for using this um, interface, um, then fill out, fill out the information here and we will contact you and tell you if you, um, if you can um, apply for the early adopter um, partnership or not. Uh, if you can't, then you're always welcome to leave your email address in this form, and we will notify you when the application is uh, on general availability. So thank you for watching the video, and I hope to see you uh, in a future collaboration where we solve the machine learning use cases for you using the Access Network cameras.